I was going to have uh, three things to talk about today, but I'm going to let some of that slide. And one of the things I was going to do, I told, uh, I asked Angel, said, I want you to be ready to read the Christmas story, which uh, I think it's not just traditional. I think it's words that has life in it. But I want to read my opening text regardless. Amen. I want to read my opening text regardless. And I want you to open your Bible with me to 1 John chapter 3. Yeah. 1 John chapter 3. If this is the first John, was there, was there another John before the first one? If this is the first one, was there another John before the first one? Yes, yes there was, St. John. Amen. It's all part of it together. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Uh, let me just read, start in verse 4. Whoever commits sin also committeth lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. That's a good word right there, isn't it? What sin? Lawlessness. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Isn't that just good preaching? I mean, you don't, even have to, you don't even have to commentate on that. That's just good preaching. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins neither has seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Little children, let no one deceive you. Now, we're not talking about babies here. We're all children of God. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Little children, let no one deceive you. Deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteousness just as he is righteous. So he who practices righteousness is what? And he who practices sin would be what? Uh-huh. This thing is what it, whatever you practice. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning for this purpose. This is the verse I was going to read. For this purpose... The Son of God was manifested. He came. He was born, showed up in Bethlehem of Judea. He was manifested that he might just be oohed and awed over as a little baby. No. But to do what? To destroy the works of the devil. How many knows that it's still God's plan that the works of the devil is destroyed off every life. And your good works is not what destroys the devil's works. It's what Jesus did and what he continues to do through his word by the spirit that keeps us delivered from the enemy. Christmas is good. But we got to enjoy this every day. On the 26th, for this purpose, he came. On the 27th, for this purpose, he came. 28, 29, 30, 30, for for this purpose, he came. January 1, for this purpose, he came. All 365 days of the year, for this purpose, he came. For this purpose, he came. For this purpose. If somebody ever asks you, do you think God has a purpose? Yes. Well, what was his purpose? To come to destroy the works of the devil. You name whatever you think is the work of the devil. Is oppression the work of the devil? Huh? Is strife a work of the devil? Is any form of disease the work of the devil? Yes. Is chaos and division the work of the devil? Yes. All sickness, all disease, all of that is the work of the devil. So that tells me that God sent Jesus not just so we could celebrate a holiday, but he came and was prophesied to come to destroy the works of the devil. Now, the Bible says that when man sinned, death came into the world because of that sin. So the enemy caused man to to be deceived, it caused man to sin, to, to disobey God, 
And therefore, Adam just didn't commit sin. Adam became sin so that when God sent his son Jesus, we don't commit righteousness. We become righteous. That's what, that's what this thing is all about. It's not about your stress. I, I watch people stress. My God, somebody sent me a Christmas card. I wasn't going to send them one. I guess I better get one sent because they sent me one. I didn't realize that this person is going to have a gift exchange at work and they brought me a gift. I don't even like this person, so I better get them a gift. So that's what I'm saying. You can give without liking. <laughs> people buy gifts for people they don't like. To, to create a false front. But that's not what God did. See, if you judge God after human hearts, you miss the whole deal. Like I mentioned Wednesday, while we were yet sinners, Christ died. God sent provision. Love came while we were yet sinners. Love came while we were yet sinners. During this time that we're in, why don't you just decide? We got one week pretty much. You know, usually we have Christmas Sunday morning. You know, then you got a few days or the next day, then we're into this. But why don't you just decide this is going to be a stress-free week? Some of you just went into sweat, me just thinking about it. How in the world can I go stress-free right before Christmas? Why don't you decide it's going to be a stress-free week? Why don't you do something that you haven't done? When's the last time you've done something for the first time? Why don't you just take a week off from stress? Why don't you just take a week off from stress? Now, now, now I, I, I know, I just heard the thoughts of some men. I'll just take a vacation from my home, man, right there. No, 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 no. See, you done entertained the wrong spirit. I said, take a week off from stress. And just say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. But I'm not blessed. I don't have money. Look, there, I may got bills piled up. No, the goodness of God is so good that your natural mind can't fathom how good his goodness is really is God is good your natural mind can't fathom how good God is so I'm going to challenge you and you may have 15 different reasons to stress this week as soon as you commit I'm not going to stress there may be 15 different reasons why you're going to stress why don't you just decide Jesus Christ the gift If you're already born again and you're already redeemed and you know that, you're on your way to heaven. He came to destroy the works of the devil. So he destroyed sin, the nature of my life. But I'm going to allow him to deal with all other things in my life. He's going to deal with the stress nature. He's going to deal with the frustration. He's going to deal with the lack. He's going to deal with it all. Because this is the purpose that he came. This is the purpose that he came. Amen. So I'm going to challenge you. Take off from stress this week. Take off from strife this week. Take off from it. Take off from it. Take off from it. And uh, let God refresh your heart and do something supernatural in your life. Amen? Amen. Say, I will will live a stress-free week. So if you do it one, you can do it two. So I'm not telling you after Christmas, get back into stress. That's not a, that's not a, it's not a time release seven day. This is a way of life, a way of life. Somebody told me the other day that, you know, I'm on this new medication It's time released. Well, let me tell you what God did is time released, but it never stops quit. Never stops working. It never stops working. It never stops working. Say, I will live stress free, sin free, pain free. Burden free. free. Come on, poverty free. free. And I'm going to enjoy the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Now, I was going to preach all the way up, and I was going to have Miss Angel read the story, and I'm still going to have her do that. Oh, you are? Yes, I is. (laughs) From up there. She's going to read from Luke 2, so get ready. Remember, no stress. 
I'm going to sit down here and listen to you. And then I'll come up and close. No stress. He does this to show you that if I can do it, everybody can do it, right? So Luke chapter 2, start at verse 1. Go to the end, honey. Okay. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were complete for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, let's say this together, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her hearts. Is that okay? Okay. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. No matter how many times I hear that story, I love it. That is the story right there. Amen. Uh, That story should never get old. That story should never get old. And you know right now, born in Bethlehem. uh, I didn't get to go to Bethlehem when I was in Israel because it was occupied by the Palestinians. And if you have a Jewish guide... Uh, and a Jewish bus driver, they would have to get off of the bus uh, for you to have somebody else take you in there. And so we were not able to do that. But glory to God. I don't care who controls it by nature of government. What I do know is this is where it began. Amen. God sent his only begotten son, and this is where he arrived. And I know one thing, that that gift that was given that day is still the same gift given today. And I'm thankful that God continues to deal with hearts. Amen. Continues to deal with hearts. And uh, glory to God to the highest. Glory to God to the highest. And may that continue to echo and ring in your heart. Hadn't God been good to us today? Amen.